Are you ready for World War III? The chairman of NATO's military committee says the U.S., Canadian and European alliance is ready for a direct fight with Russia. The Ukraine war started one year ago this month. So is any end in sight? What can we learn from past conflicts to hasten peace? Here with us is historian Mark Moyer, William P. Harris Chair of Military History at Hillsdale College, author of the book, Triumph Regained, the Vietnam War, 1965 through 1968. Mark, we'll get to your book in a moment, but first, you're an expert on military history, so is this just saber-rattling, or is an escalated conflict, maybe even a World War III, uh, possible or even likely? Well, I think anything's possible in international conflict. I think there are some things we can learn, and one of the most important is conveying resolution at a time of crisis, and that's actually one of the things that we didn't do well in Vietnam, and Lyndon Johnson actually suggested in 1964 that we weren't going to fight for Vietnam. So it is useful, I think, to make clear to our enemies that we are willing to fight so that they don't try to take advantage of us. Well, we know the Ukraine war started one year ago this month, and it seems there were a lot of miscalculations, especially on the part of Vladimir Putin. Uh, he and his military have suffered a lot of setbacks. So just how capable is his army at this time? What difference are the weapons provided by the U.S. and NATO making uh, in the war? Will they be enough to defeat Putin, do you think? Well, those are excellent questions. And part of the problem that we see in Ukraine is a timeless one that we've seen in other wars, which is that you don't really know everything you would like to know, and oftentimes what you think you know is is inaccurate. So it does seem Putin has taken a lot of damage, but we've also seen the Ukrainians have suffered casualties close to those of the Russians, and the Russians are giving indications of getting their act together. They also have a bigger population than Ukraine, so I think it's we've got to be careful about drawing any conclusions about who's stronger here and recognize that it'll, it could be decades from now that we know the full truth about both sides. Well, it could still be a long war. I, I know NATO would like to see regime change, Putin out. You know how that worked or didn't work when the CIA helped to assassinate South Vietnamese President Diem in 1963. So what are the risks with Russia regime change? Couldn't we end up with someone worse, the devil we don't know instead of the devil we do know? Yes, that's certainly the case. The you know, Vietnamese conflict shows us that uh, yeah, we, we sometimes have an ability to change regimes, but oftentimes things don't go as planned. Uh, you know, in the case of South Vietnam, we even uh, destroyed our own ally, which was part of the big problem. And then we never really fully comprehended our opponent, we thought Ho Chi Minh was still in charge for years after he had actually given way to others. And uh, so yeah, certainly no guarantee that a replacement for Putin would be better. And as, as you said, could be even worse than what we have right now. Well, it seems we uh, miscalculated at times, uh, as you said, maybe some bad intelligence too. Uh, so Triumph Regained, it follows the first book in your Vietnam series, Triumph Forsaken. This is a significant period in Vietnam War history, 65 through 68, and I know you go into quite a bit of detail about the Tet Offensive. We lost a lot of good men during that time, 55 years ago. The consensus of many historians, of course, Mark, is that the war was misguided, unjust, and you differ with that view. Why? First of all, there was a lot more at stake in Vietnam than a lot of the second guessers would have. Basically, all of Southeast Asia was up for grabs. And I show in the book how, first of all, the the countries in the region were telling the United States, if you don't save South Vietnam, this whole area is going to fall to communism. And then we see in 1965, near the end of the year, there's this big cataclysm in Indonesia where the communists and anti-communists square off. And it's Vietnam that actually tilts the balance in favor and explains why Indonesia today is one of our biggest allies in that region. And 50 years ago this month, American prisoners of war returned home. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I remember it. It was a joyous time uh, for the country. There may, may be quite a few Vietnam veterans uh, watching this right now. So what do you want them to know about their mission in Vietnam, Mark, 50 years later after homecoming? 
So I wrote this book in large part to tell veterans and their families and other Americans that, in fact, this war was a worthy enterprise. Now, the end of it was disastrous, and, to, and we abandoned our ally, I think, unnecessarily. We could have kept supporting them. But in the bigger picture, we were able to protect most of Southeast Asia, uh, aside from South Vietnam and Laos and Cambodia. And those countries today are actually critical allies in what is, I think, our most important struggle in the long term, which is our competition with China, because China, I think, poses a much greater threat to us now than Russia does. Okay, a lot of similarities to the way we exited Afghanistan, too. Okay, the book is Triumph Regained, The Vietnam War, 1965 through 68. Mark Moyer, thank you for writing uh, that book. Thank you for sharing your time and insights. We appreciate it. Great, thanks very much for having me.